This is 3.6, Implicit Differentiation, Part 1, Objective 2, where our goal is to find points on a curve for which dy dx is known. When we're done, I'd like you to know that solving problems of this type involves writing a system of equations, and I'd like you to explain where the system's two equations come from. With example 1, we want to find the points on the curve 2x squared plus y squared equals 16, where the tangent lines are horizontal and vertical. So before we solve this, we need to make note of the fact that tangent lines will be horizontal when dy dx equals 0, that slope is 0, and vertical tangent lines occur when that dy dx is undefined. So in order to find the points on the curve where we have horizontal and vertical tangents, we're going to have to first figure out what dy dx equals and then set it either equal to zero or undefined. So to find dy dx, we are going to employ the skills that we learned in objective one, which was to apply that derivative operator to both sides of the equation and then isolate dy dx. When I do that, I end up with a 4x plus a 2y dy dx equals a 0. And if I isolate dy dx, I have a negative 4x over a 2y, which is a negative 2x over a y. So this is my dy dx. It is a fraction, and fractions equal 0 when the top equals 0. So to find the horizontal tangent lines, I will have one equation that comes from the slope information. So that top of the equation must equal 0. For my vertical, I again will have two equations in my system, and the slope equation is going to come from the fact that dy dx is undefined. So fractions are undefined when the denominator equals 0. So here's our slope equation. The second equation comes from the fact that we are points on the curve. So we have to satisfy the equation of the curve before we can say that we have found our points. Now this particular system for both the horizontal and the vertical are relatively easy to solve because I can isolate x really easily in the top equation and then simply plug it in and find that y will be plus or minus 4. So I'll have two points on the curve that generate horizontal tangent lines. And same thing here, I will end up determining that x equals plus or minus root 8, or 2 root 2, however you want to write it. And the y-coordinate will be 0. So these are my points for which I have horizontal tangent lines. These are the points for which I have vertical tangent lines. And if we remember what we learned in pre-calculus about equations of this type, this is an ellipse. And if we graph the ellipse, we can see that on that ellipse, I will have two vertical tangents occurring at that negative root 8, comma 0, and at the positive root 8, comma 0. And I get two horizontal tangents at 0, 4, and at 0, negative 4. With example 2, we're going to write the equation of the line that is normal to this one, this curve, and is parallel to 2x plus y equals 0. So our goal when we're done is to have the equation of the line. Lines require points, and they require slopes. So when we're done, we will end up with the equation of that normal line. We'll have a slope and an x minus an x coordinate plus a y coordinate. Now this particular problem, it gets kind of long and so we get, we lose track of what the process is and where we're headed. So first of all, let's recall that we want to be normal. So that means the slope is going to be the opposite reciprocal of a dy dx. It will also be the opposite reciprocal, excuse me, it's not because it's normal, so it's parallel to this line. So that opposite reciprocal of the derivative is going to be the same as the slope of this line. So if I isolate y in this line, I can see 
that my slope is negative 2. So I already know that the negative 2 is going to go here. I also know that that negative 2 is the opposite reciprocal of the derivative evaluated at the point and it is the point that we have to find. So this is the information that we know and we also know that we have to be on this curve. So we're going to generate two equations, one of which is the derivative equals a half and the second one is we're on the curve. So in order to get the derivative equal to a half and create an equation out of that that we can actually use, we need to find dy dx on this curve. So dy dx, in order to find it, we will take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of this equation. When I do that, I will need to apply the product rule. So I have the first one times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first plus the derivative of 2x is a 2 minus the derivative of y is a dy dx. On the other side, we have the derivative of 0, which is just 0. Now, as before, we are going to collect the things that have dy dx's and move the things that don't have dy dx's to the other side. When I do that, I can factor the dy dx's out of the two terms that involve dy dx, which is an x minus a 1, and on the other side, I'll have a negative 2 minus a y. If I isolate dy dx, then I get a negative 2 minus a y over an x minus a 1. I need that dy dx, which is this, to equal 1 half. So to generate an equation that I can use in a system, I can either write this down or I can cross multiply so that it's a little simpler to work with. I can do 2 times the negative 2 minus y equals a 1 times an x minus 1. So here's the slope equation that belongs in my system and then I also need to be on the curve. So I'll write down the curve equation. Now we have a system of equations and it's not as easy to solve as the one in example 1. So that means I'm going to have to use some of my algebra techniques. Notice when you first learned or remember when you first learned systems of equations, you could solve them either by graphing and looking for the intersection or by doing elimination or by doing substitution. And in this scenario, substitution will probably be the most efficient simply because you have an xy term that involves both variables and cannot be eliminated. And graphing this could be a little tricky. So what we're going to do instead is we're simply going to isolate the easiest variable to isolate. And up here it looks like x would be pretty simple because I can just add 1 to both sides. So I'll get x equals a negative 3 minus a 2y. If I now substitute that in, in the bottom equation, I'll have a negative 3 minus a 2y times a y plus a 2 times this x minus a y equals 0. If I distribute now, I'll get a negative 3y minus a 2y squared minus a 6 minus a 4y minus a y equals 0. And then if I continue, I'll get a negative 2y squared, looks like a minus an 8y minus a 6 equals 0. Looks like it can cancel or factor out a negative 2 and then divide it off. So I'll get a y squared plus a 4y plus a 3. And then I can factor that and get a y plus a 3 and a y plus a 1 equals 0. So, so far it looks like I have two different points. One of them has a y coordinate of negative 1 and one of them has a y coordinate of negative 3. So to get the x coordinate I can either plug into this equation or into this one and it looks like this one might be simpler. A negative 3 minus a 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 3 plus a 2 or a negative 1.
And if I plug in a negative 3 here, I'll have a negative 3 minus a negative 2 times a negative 3. That's plus a 6. So a negative 3 plus a 6 gives me a positive 3. So it turns out that the, on this relation, we have two points where the tangent or where the normal line is going to be parallel. So the first point is negative 1, negative 1. The second point is 3, negative 3. So I'm actually going to end up with two equations of lines. The first one is x minus the negative 1 plus the negative 1. The second one is negative 2 times x minus 3 minus 3. And we're done. So I'd like you to explain where the system's two equations come from in problems of this type.